It was a busy week in the National Assembly. The Senate and House of Representatives committees still have their hands full with the 2016 budget. I'm Linda Akibe and you're welcome to the gavel. The appropriation committees in the National Assembly have begun receiving reports from the various standing committees on the 2016 budget defense sessions with government agencies. Now, this process may take another week to be completed. In the meantime, the Senate is coming down hard on the former EFCC chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Lawadi, for failing to appear before the Committee on Ethics over allegations of corruption. The Senate is to begin the process of issuing an arrest warrant for former EFCC chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Lamode. The upper chamber in the week ended, directed its committees on ethics, privileges and public petition to begin the process of issuing a warrant of arrest on the former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission over allegations of diversion of EFCC recovered loot. The Ethics Committee has been investigating allegations levelled on Mr. Lamode by a petitioner, Mr. George Ubo, who is asking the Senate to investigate the former EFCC chairman over allegations of financial crimes and corruption while in office. The committee observes as follows. One, that having waited in vain for the appearance of Mr. Ibrahim Lamode since 24th November 2015, and not seeing or hearing from him, it was forced to conclude that Mr. Ibrahim Lamode wants to evade investigation by the committee. Two, consequently, the committee reasoned that the only way to get the former EFCC chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Lamode, to appear before it was to invoke the powers of the Senate in section 89, 1C and D of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, and compare his attendance. Based on the, based on the above findings, the committee wishes to recommend as follows. One, that to save the National Assembly as the highest lawmaking body of the nation from irreparable damage to its reputation and capacity to summon, the former EFCC chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Lamode, be compared to appear before the committee to answer the activities of his tenure. Two, that to effect recommendation one above, a warrant of arrest be issued by the Senate for his arrest. Meanwhile, the Senate is asking the Central Bank of Nigeria to immediately terminate the 2013 renewal contract with system specs on the Treasury single account, TSA. The Senate is also asking the CBN to disregard the 1% charge provided in the contract. The upper chamber gave these directives after considering a report on the alleged abuse of the Treasury single account. Presenting the report... The chairman of the finance committee said the committees discovered a number of systemic weaknesses in the implementation of the TSA. With a projected total transfer by the end of 2015, put at over 2 trillion, 5 billion naira, without Senate motion halting further deductions, the federal government could have paid over 25 billion naira to the platform provider based on the charge of 1% fee for transfers to collection. The committee made 11 recommendations which were all approved by the Senate. The committee further recommends that the CBN be directed to ensure the total refund of the portion of the deductions retained by the CBN and deposit money banks and present evidence of compliance to the appropriate Senate committee. The Senate consequently directed the Central Bank of Nigeria to immediately terminate the 2013 renewal contract with system specs and to disregard the 1% charge provided in the contract. The CBN was further directed to show evidences of all refunds made by the system specs and also identify and recommend for prosecution all those involved in approving the contract. Senate President Bukola Saraki reiterated that the CBN must show evidence of compliance with all the directives of the Senate. It is mind-boggling to see the kind of money that will have just gone away to private people's hands if not because this motion come. And I want to encourage our colleagues that despite the kind of blackmail that we will see in doing our work, we should lead, follow the example that has been shown by these three committees. The Senate also directed the CBN to carry out an in-house inquiry to sanitize its system of awarding contracts. A motion calling for the embargo on foreign troops and international travels for public servants to be lifted 
survived a spirited resistance in the House of Representatives before being passed. Lawmakers argued that the embargo is denying the country of benefiting from international collaborations on capacity building and manpower development. But some other lawmakers who rose against the motion also argued that the motion should not be brought up at a time when the country is experiencing economic challenges. It was the tenth motion on the other paper for the day. A motion questioning the directive by the executive placing an embargo on foreign training and international travels for public servants. The directive says such training should be held in the country. The sponsor of the motion called for the House of Representatives to mandate four committees of the House to take steps to ensure the embargo is lifted. The whole application of the directive will impact negatively on capacity building and manpower development of government personnel, thereby reducing the productivity and ultimately compromising competence. Also concerned that the directive is capable of turning Nigeria into a pariah nation, as friendly nations that hitherto collaborated with Nigeria in offering such highly skilled training facilities will look elsewhere. A passionate debate followed. I support 100% the mover of this motion. This motion is apt. It is very timely, considering the fact that the world today is a global village. And as a global village, we cannot, because of abuses discovered in one area or the, or the other, throw away the bath, water, and the baby. I believe that rather than to conclude, it is important that we ask those committees to find out precisely from the various government agencies why the government decided to ban the concept or the ideology of these foreign trainings, knowing fully well that it is extremely important. If it has to do with the financials or whatever reason, I think it will be important because when a government has a policy, it goes with a directive. As beautiful as these trainings are, they serve the interests of development. But those against the motion were focused on their position. Honorable members, this is the time for us to face reality of life. We do not have that money. Oil boom has gone today. I don't want to use the word doom or gloom. Please, honorable members, don't let us support this motion. <laughs> I am appealing to you. When the time comes, when we have money, government will leave the embargo. If you want to train a hundred people, is it not going to be cheaper to send, to fly in two people from France or wherever they are going to train overseas down here to train the people? So, without any doubt, Mr. Speaker, we do not need this right now. The embargo should stay for now, but if things ever improve, maybe we can revisit this. The issue of saying that, well, maybe we should do it with moderation and all that, during the budget defense, so many of the agencies who were oversighting came with local travels. Mr. Speaker, I, t I told one of the agencies that I know the companies you go and oversight or you go for inspections, they send you flight tickets, they book accommodations for you, and they provide you with a vehicle to move around. And they told me that does not happen anymore, and I know it is still happening. Is it the same group of people we are going to say, tell now that where you should do it with moderation? Public servants don't understand that language, Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry to say. In place of the original prayer of the motion, an amendment was proposed and adopted to have the four committees find out why the embargo was placed in the first place. The motion was then put to a vote. Those in favor of the motion as amended say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. Yay. The ayes have it. The House will now await the report of the four committees.